Hey everybody, in this tutorial we're going to talk about the basics of materials in iClone. So materials are very important in regards to the surface appearance of your props. You can manipulate and change the uh, materials in various ways to create all sorts of really cool effects. We'll talk about a few of those as we go through this tutorial. So right now on the screen I have a couple of uh, props here, a signboard and a traffic light. Uh, don't ask why the traffic light is indoors, that's just the way it is. All right, and we're going to talk about the material settings in just a moment. Uh, but you can find these props if you go to, uh, it's actually part of our uh, Toontown content pack. And I'll provide a link up in the description for that in the content store. And once you download it, you can find it in the set tab over here under uh, props. And you can go down here to, where is it? The city elements uh, pack right here, city elements Toontown. There we go, into that folder. And there's all kinds of cool, really colorful designs uh, for buildings, um, you know, stuff like uh, town props and, and all sorts of really cool stuff that you can uh, use in to create your own sort of uh, toon town uh, uh, environment. And you can kind of look at that on your own time, all right? But I'm going to focus on materials for now. So let's take a look at our signboard first and take a look at the material settings. To, so to find the materials uh, for your prop, you can go up here. Once it's selected, go up here to material. All right, and at the very top, you will find a material list. And you can see that this prop here only has one material and uh, one mesh name here. Okay, so the plain one is the mesh name, only has one material. And every material will contain nine texture channels or nine texture maps down here. You can see we're only using two of those channels right now. All right, let's take a look at the prop beside it, the uh, traffic light here. You can see the traffic light has four separate materials, okay? They all have the same mesh, but each material is assigned to a different part of that mesh, okay? So you can see the red material right here is obviously assigned to the red light, and the yellow is assigned to the yellow light, and the green is assigned to the green light. So you can manipulate these individually on the same prop, okay, which is really cool. That's what materials are for. All right, let's take a look now at the materials, uh, the material settings for our more basic uh, signboard prop here, okay? So we're gonna skip through texture settings right now and go a little bit further down to material settings here, okay? Now in material settings, uh, let's just zoom in a little bit on our uh, signboard here. In material settings, you can see that we have uh, the diffuse color right here. And by default, this is generally white, okay? If you change your diffuse color map to something like black, for example, and press okay, It'll just create the, make the entire signboard black, all right? Generally, you don't want to do that. If you change your diffuse color to like a nice color, like a nice cherry red, for example, and press OK, it'll just tint the entire material uh, that you have selected uh, red, like this in this case, okay? You can do green or whatever you want, but generally the best idea to get the uh, natural colors for your textures is to just use a diffuse color of white. Now the next thing we're going to talk about is the opacity. Okay, so the opacity is just basically adjusting the visibility of your prop. If you uh, click and drag this slider down, you can make your prop slowly become visible or invisible. And you can animate this if you want. So right now we're on frame one. If I take my opacity down to zero, and then I go to the end of my project, which is only frame 29 in this case, and I take it up to 100, we'll create an opacity animation. All right, so if I go back to frame one here and I play back, Oof, it'll suddenly just appear on the screen. Magic, all right? And uh, we can just uh, go back to frame one here. We can press Control Z a couple times to undo that, and uh, it'll just take away all that animation that we created. Okay, Control Z, of course, is undo. Now, below these uh, opacity uh, channel or parameter here is specular and glossiness. Now, specular and glossiness, uh, specular is basically the reflectivity of your surface, so the, uh, how reflective your surface is. If you increase your specular, you can see it becomes very reflective, okay? It's like a metallic type of surface. The glossiness slider uh, is basically how the surface scatters light. So how focused your light is. If you increase the glossiness, you can see we can focus the specular highlight in a particular area where the light is hitting our object. If we decrease the glossiness, it'll just scatter all throughout the object, uh, making almost like a more rough appearance, okay? decrease the specular and you get a more rough appearance like this. If you want a more uh, uh, kind of uh, metallic or shiny appearance, 
you can increase your specular and increase your glossiness quite high and you can get a result just like this okay there you go if you want to set these values back to the default values you can just double click on the text for specular and glossiness and that'll reset it back to the default values okay that's all i'm really going to talk about in the material settings those are the ones that you most commonly use and we'll talk about the other ones in more advanced tutorials but let's move up to the texture settings now so like I mentioned, every material will have nine texture channels, okay? And you can include, you can uh, populate each one of those with a texture map. So in this case, we're only using the diffuse map and the bump map, okay? Uh, there's also opacity, which we'll talk about later, ambient occlusion, uh, specular and reflection, displacement, glow, and blend, which get into more advanced uh, techniques. But one thing they all have in common is if we select our diffuse texture channel right here, we go down a little bit, you'll see they all have a strength slider. Now this is basically how strong the effect or the texture map is uh, being displayed on your mesh. Okay, now Let's go ahead and take the strength down. And you can see as we take it down, it slowly fades to the white that we had before in the, in the, in the diffuse channel I showed you before. All right, if we increase that, there you go, we get 100. You can also do the same thing with the bump map or all the other maps as well. All right, but uh, the diffuse map is the most obvious example. Now let's take a look at how to load in different texture maps. Okay, we're going to use the diffuse map uh, as an example for this again. The easiest way to do this is just make sure your uh, texture channel is selected and go down here and use the load button. Okay, and I can load in this one I already have prepared. Just double click it. Okay, and now our uh, signboard here has a kind of stone border on it. Okay, which is pretty cool. Let's press Control Z to undo that, and let's show the other way to load in a texture map. You can double click on the channel that you want to load it in. So I'm going to double click in the diffuse channel there and do the same thing. Okay, there you go. And Control Z will uh, show you one more method of doing that. If we go to our uh, Explore window, okay, I'm just going to go to the uh, folder that I want here, and you can click and drag that uh, texture or that uh, image directly in to the uh, texture channel that you want okay just like this and you can see voila there we go now I talked a little bit about the opacity map uh, or the opacity uh, value in the material settings we also have an opacity map for the texture settings as well now the interesting thing about the opacity map and the texture settings is that you can change different parts of it so you can only have different parts of your prop will be invisible and different parts will be visible so for example, if I double click on that channel, I have a menu board opacity map right here. Let's take a look first at the diffuse map here. Okay, if I just preview it, you can see the actual like chalk part or the actual chalkboard part is on the top left. This is how it's uh, laid out in as far as the UV settings, okay? This part of our texture map is where that particular you know, part is assigned, All right? If we go down a couple more to our opacity map, you can see that we have a black area here where the chalkboard is and the rest of it is all white. So what's going to happen is any part of your opacity map that is black is going to be invisible, okay, when you load it in. Any part that's white is going to be completely visible. And there's, you know, halfway, which is gray, which we're not going to talk about right now, uh, but I just wanted to mention that to you. Okay, so let's go ahead and load in that uh, opacity map. And what's going to happen, our chalkboard is going to become invisible, like I mentioned, okay, because it's in the exact same position on the texture map as the chalkboard in our diffuse channel there okay and you can adjust the opacity strength here as well just like this and if we you know adjust the strength you can make it you know semi-transparent another way to do that is just you know make it gray instead of black uh, but i just wanted to show you uh, those examples there okay we take our strength down to zero or we can just basically uh, reset the opacity map we can trash it okay if we want and it'll just remain like this now let's take a look at how we can edit the textures. Okay, so I'm just going to edit this texture map right here, uh, the diffuse map, and go down here to use the adjust color tool. Okay, this is a very, very useful tool in iClone. Uh, we have all sorts of uh, things that we can adjust here. Let's zoom in a little bit further. We can adjust the, uh, the brightness of the entire map. Okay, if we do that, you can see the brightness will increase. We can take the brightness all the way down. We can have a very dark appearance. Okay. Uh, just reset it back to zero if you if you want to uh, set it back to default. Uh, there's also things like the contrast. Okay, you can make it a very high contrast. You can change the hue uh, to all kinds of weird funky colors. Okay, 
You can make it uh, more saturation or less saturation in this case. Uh, almost a little bit grayed out, okay? So you can do all sorts of things, adjust the color balance and everything like that. Um, a lot of different uh, things you can do. If you increase the softness, it'll blur it out quite significantly. Generally, you don't want to do that, okay, unless you're going for a particular effect. But I'm just going to reset these all back to zero. Okay, so that's the um, most powerful tool for adjusting the uh, values of your texture map. If I close down the Adjust Color panel, we can also decide to, if we've made any changes that we like, we can also decide to save those changes. So let's do a quick example here. I'm actually going to adjust the color just slightly here. We'll uh, throw a little bit more contrast in there, okay? I like to add a little bit more contrast. And we'll go ahead and close that down. And what we can do is we can actually select that uh, texture channel there and save it. So if I go ahead and save it, I can save it to that same folder right here. We'll just call it, uh, you know, um, high contrast. All right, and press enter to save it. And if we go back to our adjust color there and, and restore the contrast to zero and then close that down, then we can go ahead and uh, double click in the, in the diffuse channel there and load in that high contrast map. And you can see we have the higher contrast, okay? So it basically saves those uh, values, those parameter adjustments to that map and you can reload it in at any time if you like the way it looks. Okay, and we also have the uh, tried and true way of launching your uh, texture map in your photo editing software, such as Photoshop or GIMP or whatever you have. If you want to do that, just make sure your channel is selected and then go to the launch button down here. What that'll do is that'll launch up, in this case I'm using Photoshop, and it'll launch up that uh, texture map in Photoshop. Now, what's going to happen is it's going to basically in the cache, it's going to have a temporary uh, version of this image. And whenever you save it in Photoshop, it's going to update automatically in iClone. Okay, so see, for example, let's just choose a weird kind of brush here. I don't know, something with a pattern on it. Maybe like uh, this one right here. And then we'll have some, we'll make a green color. We'll, we'll put some grass on the on the bottom of our uh, of our chalkboard here. Something like this. All right, and there we go. Looks kind of weird, but we'll stick with it. And we'll go ahead and just uh, go File and Save. And once we save that, it'll automatically update that in iClone. You can see right here, we have those little uh, things of the grass at the very bottom there. Looks very healthy. Now we can go ahead and close down Photoshop right now. There we go. And it'll retain that uh, change to the diffuse texture. Another quick thing I wanted to take a look at was the glow map. All right, so let's go up for the glow map. Let's move over to our uh, traffic light right here. And you can see right now, we don't have any glow map, but that's because we have the traffic light, the uh, rest of the traffic light selected, okay? If we select one of the uh, materials here, like red or yellow or green, you can see we have a glow channel right here. Okay, let's take a look at the glow channel for green. Now, like I mentioned before, if you want, you can decrease the strength and decrease the level of glow on that particular section of your mesh, which is pretty cool. We can do the same thing for the yellow. All right, if we select the yellow, there's our strength slider right there. Increase it or decrease it, just like that, okay? And uh, keep in mind that this strength parameter here is in green text, so that means you can animate it. You can animate it throughout your project, which means you can, you know, at zero frames, you can make it zero. At frame whatever, uh, you can make it uh, whatever you like. So let's go ahead and uh, keep all of these at zero, for example. Take the red one and put it down to zero too. And maybe we'll keep the red one at 100% at, uh, here. And then we'll go to the last frame and take red down to zero. And then we'll take green up to 100% uh, strength value. Okay. And if we play that back, you can see it'll just switch from red to green. Okay, there you go. Now one important thing to note with uh, the advent of iClone 7 is we now have two different shader types. We have traditional and PBR, which stands for physically based rendering. Okay, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select the traffic light uh, mesh here, or the material rather, and we can see that right now the shader type is set to traditional. Okay, a lot of the older iClone props will still use a traditional shader method. All right, so let's take a look at what happens if I switch this from traditional to PBR. Notice that the metallic and roughness maps will appear. Those will appear, if we go back to traditional, 
in place of the specular and reflection, okay? What happens is that metallic and roughness allow for a more realistic uh, reflection of light on, on the surface of an object, okay? It's a more, uh, more advanced technology than previously we had. Okay, if you want to make your, uh, say, for example, the uh, traffic light structure appear more metallic, what you can do is you can select your metallic map, and you can go to the Adjust Color. Now let's take a look at, uh, maybe focus a little bit on the bottom here, and increase the brightness of our metallic map. You can notice that when we do that, it gets a little bit darker, all right? The uh, structure gets a little bit darker, and it becomes a bit more metallic looking, okay? Not as rough. If we take that all the way down to zero, it'll become more cartoon looking and rough looking. If we take it up to 100, and we can use that in combination with the roughness map. Because the roughness map is very white already, uh, which is kind of uh, not making it as effective. So if we take our roughness map and take the brightness down, then you can really see the reflectivity start to appear, especially along the base there of our object, okay? So using the roughness and metallic maps in combination, you can achieve a very rough uh, or metallic uh, type of look on your props, okay? Fairly straightforward. Uh, I think the green on the bottom there, you can see the best result. All right, so we can keep that the way it is, just like that, and close down our adjust. Uh, let's make it a little bit less metallic. There we go. Something like that, I think, is a happy medium. We'll close that down. Now, if you want to save this prop with all the material modifications you made, you can easily do that. Just go to your Custom tab over here under Set and go into Props, and uh, just um, make sure you zoom in on it, whatever kind of view you want, like this. And we can go down here and just uh, press Plus, and there you go. We can call it uh, Street Light Indoor, okay? And then if we want, we can just load that in, uh, click and drag it into our scene, just like this. And all those, you can see it looks exactly the same. So all those material adjustments or texture adjustments we made will be retained. All right, we'll just go ahead and delete that. Now, one final thing I want to talk about with materials is the ability to copy and paste the materials or pick and paint uh, to different props in your scene. So what we're going to do for that is I'm going to make my uh, signboard here invisible. Let's just go ahead and click the uh, all-seeing eye at the top there to make it invisible. And I'm going to create a primitive shape and a box. All right, just throw that in our scene and bring it a little bit over here. And what I'm going to do is go here, over here to our, mater our media tab, rather. And there you can find your materials library. And in the materials library, you can throw in whatever material you want, okay? All sorts of kind of cool stuff that you can throw in there. Let's throw in this corrugated metal, for example, there. Or we can throw in the uh, the marble. Okay, I think the marble one looks pretty cool, like a nice marble uh, pillar. And if we want, uh, what we can do is we can create another one, another primitive shape, all right? And say, for example, we made all sorts of modifications to this marble box. We're not going to do that right now, obviously, but uh, we don't have time for that. Uh, but what I can do is I can go to Materials up here, and I can just go to the very top and use this Picker tool here to pick the material. You can also use the B hotkey. And I'm just going to pick this material right here, and I can paint it onto any other prop, okay? I can paint it to this uh, box right here, all right? We can paint it to uh, the wall if we want, all right? You can see it's stretching a little bit because of the uh, UV map is, is slightly different. You can press Control z to undo that, and there you go. So if you want to see all the materials, all the embedded materials that iClone has to offer, you can simply just uh, stretch your content manager out like this. You can see them in a different type of view. And if you want, you can apply them all just like clicking and dragging from your uh, content manager over here, just like this. And there's also a lot of different uh, content packs that you can purchase as well. The Substance Power 200, uh, Substance Power Tools like this one here, all kinds of uh, really cool stuff. This one has a bunch of different types of stones, uh, for example, that we can apply and... Uh, you can learn more about that in the content store, and I'll provide a link in the description for you as well. So I think that's about all I want to cover, guys. Thanks so much for watching. Hopefully you learned a lot, and make sure you check out our forums at forum.relusion.com, and I hope to see you in the next video.